Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series on the synthesis of yoga. We are in the conditions of the synthesis, the three steps of nature, page 17, beginning with the sentence, for as is indicated by the name, That's continue. Right. With our beloved Ranga, how can I forget that? <laughs> okay. So we'll read the whole para and then we'll come back to it. The three steps of nature are matter and then from matter emerges life after a huge, huge, uh, long time. And then after that, the mind is born. This is the three steps of nature. Matter, life and mind. So that he is discussing. For, as is indicated by the name, causal body, karana, as opposed to the two others, which are instruments, karana, this crowning manifestation is also the source and effective power of all that in the actual evolution has preceded it. Our mental activities are indeed a derivation, selection, and so long as they are divided from the truth that is secretly their source, a deformation of the divine knowledge. Our sensations and emotions have the same relation to the bliss, our nervous forces and actions to the aspect of will or force assumed by the divine consciousness, our physical being to the pure essence of that bliss and consciousness. The evolution which we observe and of which we are the terrestrial summit may be considered in a sense as an inverse manifestation by which these supreme powers are in the, uh, sorry, supreme powers in their unity and their diversity use, develop and perfect the imperfect substance and activities of matter, of life and of mind so that they may uh, so that they the inferior modes they may have uh, I have, I think some, uh, they may express, I have, in mutable relativity. So, they, the inferior modes, that's what you have? Yes, the yeah. inferior modes may express so, yeah. in mutable relativity. Okay. So, may express in mutable relativity an increasing harmony of the divine and eternal states from which they are born. If this be the truth of the universe, then the goal of evolution is also its cause. It is that which is immanent in its elements and out of them is liberated. But the liberation is surely imperfect if it is only an escape and there is no return upon the containing substance and the activities to exalt and transform them containing substance and activities to exalt and transform them. The immanence itself would have no credible reason for being if it did not end in such a transfiguration. But if human mind can become capable of the glories of the divine light, human emotion and sensibility can be transformed into the mold and assume the measure and movement of the supreme bliss Human action not only represent but feel itself to be the motion of a divine and non-egoistic force and the physical substance of our being sufficiently partake of the purity of the supernal essence, sufficiently unify plasticity and durable constancy to support and prolong these highest experiences and agencies, then all the long labor of nature will end in a crowning justification and our evolutions reveal their profound significance. The language is a little involved, but basically 
I'll tell you in brief what he's saying, then we'll read the para. He is saying that there is a, a descent of Satchidananda into the opposite of itself. This is the involution. And in the involution, he is now discussing only the three steps. There is the matter, life and mind. But you can also think of it as the physical world, the subtle world and the causal world. That's why he is using the word karana. Okay, so karana in our Indian language means the cause, the reason for something. Okay, so that the causal world is causing the universe. But the matter and life, matter and life are only instruments as opposed to the cause. There is the origin and there are the effects. That's what he's saying. And he's saying that this involution comes down into matter and then there is an evolution upwards. But in the evolution, you have to go back to the source from where you came. But in the process, instead of going back to the source where you escape into the source, but you are leaving the physical world alone. So he says that the <coughs> immanence of the divine here coming down into this place would have no meaning if you leave it and leave it as it is. So <coughs> this is Ramdo's uh, contribution to it. He says, escape by all means out of body, mind, life, but come back into it to transform it. Okay, we'll read what he's saying. So, <clears throat> for as is indicated by the name causal body, so he is talking of the three levels gross body, subtle body, causal body. The gross body is where the individuals are, the subtle body is where the cosmic forces are, and the causal body is the origin of everything. And that's a transcendent. So you can also substitute these uh, gross body, subtle body and causal body by transcendent, cosmic and the individual. Okay, so. Karana, kar, as is indicated by the name causal body, kar, karana, as opposed to the two others which are instruments, karana. Karana is the originator and that which is originated are the instruments, matter and life. <clears throat> okay, so this crowning manifestation is the source and effective power of all that in the actual evolution has preceded it. So the crowning manifestation, you have to go right up to the causal world. So before it's a crowning manifestation, but it's also the source and effective power of all that in the actual evolution has preceded it. You are climbing up first, you have matter, then you have life, then you have mind, and then you go to the source of everything. But it contains all these things in itself. That's what he's saying. You see, <clears throat> it's a source and effective power of all that in the actual evolution has preceded it. What has preceded in the actual evolution? Matter and life and mind. So these are powers which are contained in the source. That's what he's saying. Our mental activities, and now he's showing you the connection between these two. Okay? Our mental activities are indeed a derivation, selection, and so long as they are divided from the truth that is secretly their source, a deformation of the divine knowledge. Now he's giving you the links between the highest and the lowest. The causal world, you can also call it the supermind for our understanding. So the supermind contains mind because that's a knowledge aspect, chit. And when it comes down into manifestation, it becomes a mind. And mind is, however limited, its source is chit. Its source is in the supermind. But when it comes down, it has entered into a darkness and it has diminished itself and reduced itself. So it has distorted itself and it's not the actual knowledge, but it's a shadow of the supermental knowledge. So it is distorted. Now he establishes the connection between supermind and mind and then also the chit shakti with the vital and bliss self also he is connecting and sat which is the essential substance becomes the body. So this is the connection he is making between them. <coughs> First of all the mental. The mental activities are indeed a derivation. They are coming from the supermind. 
okay the causal he has used the word here karana he has not yet introduced the idea of super mind so he is not saying but we can easily go there and say the super mind is the cause of the universe therefore mind is a derivation a shadow play or a reduced condition of the super mind okay and selection it's also a selection it's a reduction and so long as they are divided from the truth that is secretly their source so the super mind is the source of the mind okay it's a deformation of the divine knowledge our mind is a deformation of the divine knowledge but when you rise in consciousness and go back there you will have the divine knowledge now he comes to the chit shakti okay the vital element our sensations and emotions have the same relation to the bliss our nervous forces and actions to the aspect of will or force assumed by the divine consciousness he is a little flexibly he is using his words but in other places he is very very clear i have so, our vital forces yes, yes. here that's, that's right so, you, so, you didn't have that ah uh, nervous forces but yeah, yeah nervous yeah. forces you yeah. had and i have vital forces yeah. i have noted that unfortunately i am using my book because i don't have the tablet i could have brought the cwsa but then i have my notes here that's why <clears throat> so he is telling you that sat chit shakti ananda sat becomes matter or corresponds to our body chit shakti corresponds to the vital okay the prana and bliss becomes the um bliss becomes the psychic being he has not said that here but he is establishing a loose connection and very precise connection he says elsewhere so bliss self becomes the psychic being in man and super mind becomes mind that's a connection is making in other words the ascetic is rejecting body mind life same though is not in agreement with them he is saying don't reject that which is even the shadow of the divine is divine essentially so we don't reject it we purify it that's what he say now our sensations and emotions obviously that is the vital have the same relation to the bliss because sensations and vitals and emotions are um they can give you pleasure but they can also give you a little pain because they are distorted but that which gives you pleasure is related to the ananda so that's why he is saying this okay <clears throat> then uh, bliss uh, pure uh, and by the divine consciousness will now he is saying will our will or force is uh, assumed by the divine consciousness he is using very uh, loose terms here because just the beginning of the <laughs> para the beginning of the book so later on as i told you he makes a clear connection between all sat becomes matter chit shakti becomes the vital ananda becomes the psychic being and super mind becomes mind even super mind is a he was called is the divine quaternary okay so super mind becomes a mind he is establishing a connection others are not establishing a connection they say that this body mind life is absolutely imperfect we have nothing to do with it we go away okay that he will come to the end of the towards the mid, uh, end of the para he will discuss that so he says that uh, the evolution which we observe and of which we are the terrestrial summit so the evolution goes from matter to life to mind and into the spiritual planes of consciousness and it can go right up to the top and that is the we are the terrestrial summit we are not the spiritual summit we are the terrestrial summit we are still in the physical world may be considered in a sense as an inverse manifestation so there is an involution in which the divine is plunging himself into the opposite of himself and now from matter which contains everything in essence slowly all these things are coming out so they are inverse involution and evolution are inverse manifestation right may be considered the inverse manifestation by which these supreme powers in their unity and their diversity use develop and perfect the imperfect substance and activities of matter life and mind so that they may 
the inferior modes may express in mutable relativity an increasing harmony of the divine and eternal states from which they were born so he is telling you that the purpose of evolution is to reveal the divine here itself in slow steps that's basically what he's saying okay. how do you see it today what is how do you see these steps today these slow steps yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Today also, in our 2022. Yes, the, the it's a slow process, but it is going on. <laughs> um, and the unity and they use okay, develop and perfect the imperfect substance and activities of matter, life, and mind, so that. they may express in mutable relativity mutable relativity in the physical world an increasing harmony of the divine and eternal states from which they are born so what he is saying is evolution is slowly revealing the divine qualities omnipotence omniscience and omnipresence slowly the physical world is being manipulated in such a way that these powers are being revealed that's what he is saying and the ev- purpose of evolution is to go back to where you came from but in the physical world the ascetic uh, the yogi can go back there but that leaves the physical world as it is but the he has to do work such a way such in such a way that the world itself will reveal the divine more and more in slow steps not all at once not possible okay so in mutable relativity the world is mutable and it's also relative okay an increasing harmony of the divine and eternal states from which they are born if this be the truth of the universe then the goal of evolution is also its cause the divine is the cause of the evolu- of the universe and the goal of evolution also is divine it is the same that's what he's saying okay clear the goal of evolution is also its cause it is that which is immanent in its elements so the divine is immanent in the elements what are the elements normally use the word elements for ether air fire water earth so the divine is there everywhere in all these things the divine is there you don't see him but he is there just like the tree is there in the seed okay immanence <clears throat> and out of them is liberated so one by one these things are coming out again like the russian doll <laughs> okay slowly they are coming out they are there but the liberation is surely imperfect if it's only an escape and there is no return upon the containing substance so the containing substance is matter matter is the substance which contains life mind and super mind so if it, you escape from matter but if you don't come back into the containing substance and change it then what is the purpose of evolution that's what he said okay look carefully he is saying but the liberation the liberation of the soul from the prison house of body mind life is surely imperfect if it is only an escape and there is no return upon the containing substance and activities to exalt and transform them you have to evolution is fine first you escape but then you come back and change all these things the immanence itself would have no credible reason for being if it did not end in such a transfiguration okay so there is an interesting uh, sentence the immanence why has the divine come down here if he is only for escaping <laughs> surely there is a purpose he has come down here and he is only escaping surely there is another purpose the purpose is the transformation of the f- physical world itself the immanence itself would have no credible reason for being if it did not end in such a transfiguration but if human mind can become capable of the glories of the divine light so the human mind can go to light there is a connection between the light light is knowledge and human mind human emotion and sensibility the vital can be transformed into the mold and assume the measure and movement of a supreme bliss our vital being should be able to reflect the supreme bliss the divine ananda 
Human action not only represent but feel itself to be the motion of a divine and non-egoistic force and the physical substance of our being sufficiently partake of the purity of the eternal supernal essence sufficiently unify plasticity and durable constancy to support and prolong these highest experiences and agencies then all the long labor of nature will end in a crowning justification and her evolutions reveal their profound significance each word will look at it and find the justification for it so he is saying mind must become full of divine light the vital however impurity now should become full of ananda and even our body should partake of the supernal essence the supernal essence is the subtlest of matter sat so matter also should become a sufficiently partake he is saying because um our body is much more developed than the animal body the animal body is much more developed than the plant body so there is a at the higher level the body of the supramental race will be sufficiently plastic as well as durable okay and constant and it must be able to support the divine consciousness that's what is saying there is a biological evolution which supports the evolution of consciousness if the biological evolution is not there a divine consciousness how will it enter into a body which can support it it can't so there has to be a biological evolution also which will be more and more subtle and more and more plastic so the supramental body will be a body it will be substance it will be it will it, be substance yes. yes it will be substance it's not something airy fairy but the substance will be capable of incorporating the divine consciousness just as the animal cannot incorporate into itself the spiritual consciousness it needs a human being he has told you earlier if you remember when man was made the god said yes this is fine now we can come into it so the biological forms are also becoming more and more complex and capable of supporting a higher and higher consciousness so the human body Can you give some examples Pardon? can you give some examples of the biological forms oh very simple the worm okay it has no mind but it's got a life so it's a biological form which cannot have mental consciousness but how is it becoming more and more capable ah so the worm can become something like a, a small insect it can move much faster it can it can sense things there are biological forms <coughs> the take a cat or a dog is not a cat far superior in its uh, capacities than the worm so the consciousness in the worm is divine essentially so it doesn't want to remain imprisoned in that worm body it wants to migrate to a higher body when where it will be able to express itself more easily so as soon as a biological form is ready it migrates into it what is migrating the divine presence the divine consciousness is migrating into the cat and from the cat again it wants to migrate because it's divine in essence so when it gets a higher biological form man then it migrates into the man right and now we can't incorporate the supramental force we can't incorporate so you need a supramental biological form you follow what i'm saying and that biological form will not be like ours it will not have a liver it will not have a um, stomach it will not have kidneys they will be replaced by energy centers he has discussed this in the uh the book the supramental manifestation upon earth so it will be a body capable of sustaining the divine consciousness 
That's what he said. Yeah, I, I just didn't quite get how the worm is evolving into that okay. higher consciousness. That's what I wanted to explain to you. The worm is not evolving. Ah. The worm remains a worm. Okay. It's a consciousness in the worm which is essentially divine and doesn't like to be imprisoned in that worm body. Okay. So, but it has to migrate into something superior. But if the biological form is not available, how can it migrate? Now it's clear. So, as soon as a biological form which is slightly superior, now the worm consciousness says, the divine worm consciousness says, ah, here is something better, I go there. So, it's a consciousness that is evolving. So, the line in Savitri, and in the worm foresees the coming God. That's right. Now it's clear. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is what we must understand. The biological evolution is they are saying only forms are going on changing. Okay? But it's actually the spiritual consciousness, in the spiritual evolution, it is a consciousness that is evolving and occupying biological forms higher and higher and higher. Excellent. And that is the reason why he has said earlier that the animal cannot have a, a mental consciousness. But mental consciousness, the Material, the physical world has to create a, a substance which is capable of thought. And that's our brain. The brain is matter which is capable of sustaining thought. So when the animal wants to evolve into the next stage, there has to be a form ready for it. It has to have... It has to go to a higher form. Yes, um, yes. So, even in the physical, in the animal world also, there are grades. For instance, the chimpanzee is definitely at a, because it's got a brain. The dolphin also got a brain. Okay. So, even the lower forms can migrate into higher biological forms. But from there, it can't have a divine consciousness. But as soon as man is there, his consciousness, his biological form is now sufficiently plastic to allow a divine consciousness. But not a supramental consciousness. For that you have to evolve a divine body. And a divine body would be, he has not said that here, but it would be sexless, it would be self-created. Swayam Bhu, it would create itself, not in biological, uh, not a sexual body. It would be a body which the divine is manifest. Just as mani the divine is manifesting the world, the supramental man would be able to manifest himself in matter and dissolve himself also if he wants. So when we s read in Savitri that that she is a self-born force, what was the exact line? Um. No. A self-born force was here. Ah. Self-born, that's it. Self-born, yes. That's what I'm saying. Got it. Mm -hmm. Self-born. Our body is not self-born. It is matter which is creating the body. But there she is creating her own body. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, he said that, yeah. When mother asked him, he said, I will manifest in the first supramental body. Built in the supramental way. Yeah, that's right. So, and actually the exon, the immanence itself would have no credible reason for being if it did not end in such a transfiguration. And the transfiguration is the divinization of the human body. But if human mind can become capable of the glories of the divine light, human emotion and sensibility can be transformed into the mold and assume the measure and movement of a supreme bliss. He is uh, using very complicated words, but to make it simple, the human mind must be capable of incorporating the divine knowledge and the light. The, our vital must become sufficiently pure so that it can experience a permanent ananda, supreme bliss. Human action not only represents but feels itself to be the motion of a divine and non-egoistic force, non-egoistic cosmic force. And the physical substance of our being, the body of our being, sufficiently partake of the purity of the supernal essence. The supernal essence is the sat, the subtlest of substance. Okay? Sufficiently unify 
plasticity and durable consistency it should be sufficiently plastic but it should also be durable our body is durable but not very plastic but it is much more plastic than the other so this plasticity and durability must both be there in the physical uh, in the supramental body and prolong these highest experiences and agencies it must be able to support these highest experiences and agencies then all the long labor of nature will end in a crowning justification this is saying because many say oh my god to go to the divine consciousness so much of difficulty there is so much of uh, pain and suffering and all that so uh, what is this i want to only escape i don't want this pain and pleasure but shrinda is saying you will find the justification for the pain and the and the suffering he is saying it will be justified you will say oh all these things were there because they had a role to play and now i can see the justification for the suffering and what is that justification it is that which goads you to the next level which is that which goads you to the next level if there is no suffering you would be static you would be very very comfortable in your comfort zone there would be no progress but something is goading you <laughs> yeah, but then there's the saying that the divine leads but he does not goad Uh, well uh, we are in the realm of words okay so okay <laughs> so, so that's a problem okay so and you will see that nature's long evolution long labor is justified because there is a reason for everything in the physical world okay <laughs> now so dazzling is even a glimpse of the supreme existence and so absorbing its attraction that once seen we feel readily justified in neglecting all else for its pursuit even by an opposite exaggeration to that which sees all things in mind and the mental life as an exclusive ideal mind comes to be regarded as an unworthy deformation and a supreme obstacle the source of an illusory universe a negation of the truth and itself to be denied and all its works and results annulled if we desire the final liberation but this is a half truth which errs by regarding only the actual limitations of mind and ignores its divine intention the ultimate knowledge is that which perceives and accepts god in the universe as well as beyond the universe and the integral yoga is that which having found the transcendence can return upon the universe and possess it retaining the power freely to descend as well as ascend the great stair of existence for if the eternal wisdom exists at all the faculty of mind also must have some high use and destiny that use must depend on its place in the ascent and in the return and that destiny must be a fulfillment and transfiguration not a rooting out or an annulling so words are complicated but what he is saying is that normally when we are in our normal consciousness we have no idea what the divine consciousness is but even if you have a small glimpse of it he said it is so fantastic that you want nothing else <laughs> so in fact you want nothing else means you are willing to give up even body mind life and all so that's a justification for that now we'll read each sentence and see so dazzling is even a glimpse of the supreme existence the supreme existence the divine consciousness okay you can have glimpses of it in the beginning but even that glimpse is enough i told you once there was a boy who came and he told me that for a few seconds he had gone out of his body but when you go out of your body your your consciousness is not in the prison house so you get the meaning of existence you understand and then you come back into your body but now that becomes the purpose of your life you know so that's what he told me 
He said that only for a few seconds. So Srimad is talking of a glimpse. <laughs> so if, even if you have a glimpse of that, nothing else is worth it and you want only that. Okay, so. And so absorbing its attraction that once seen, we feel readily justified in neglecting all else for its pursuit. I want only the divine consciousness. I don't care for my body, my life and my mind. Okay, so that's what he's saying. And even by an opposite exaggeration to that which sees all things in mind and the mental life as an exclusive ideal, mind comes to be regarded as an unworthy deformation and a supreme obstacle. The, when you, get, you go to the self, you see that the mind is distorting the truth. So you don't want to have anything to do with it. You want to reject it. Okay, so that's what he's saying. Eh? Uh, and it, it's a supreme obstacle, the source of an illusory universe. When you leave the mind and go to the higher mind, the world becomes an illusion. That we have discussed many times. The world becomes an illusion. <clears throat> so, when I was in my mental consciousness, I was seeing everything wrong. So, why should I continue to be there? I don't want the mind. Okay, that's what he's saying. But he does call it an opposite exaggeration. Yes, yes. it's an exaggeration. Yes. The ascetic is exaggerating. That's what he's saying. Okay? So, <clears throat> mind comes to regard as a, and a source of an illusory negation of truth uh, and itself to be denied and all its works and results annulled if it desires the final liberation. I want only the divine consciousness, so therefore I reject all these things. Okay? But it's an exaggeration. As he says, but this is a half-truth, which errs, how, what is the error? By regarding only the actual limitations of mind and ignoring its divine intention. The mind, you are not seeing, you are seeing its imperfections, but why don't you see what it's capable of? But you can get the, uh, you can understand the capable of the mind only when you go to the higher level of consciousness. That's why when you get that glimpse, you understand that, yes, this is, the mind is capable. And if you see that, then you won't reject the mind. But the attraction of the higher consciousness is so intense that you want to neglect everything else. It's a justification for the ascetic. He's saying that there is some, you can understand why he wants to reject. Okay? So, uh, but he says, you are ignoring the divine intention. The ultimate knowledge, not the spiritual knowledge, but the ultimate knowledge is that which perceives and accepts God in the universe. So, the ascetic is not accepting God in the universe. The universe is only a, a illusion. I don't want it. As well as beyond the universe. So, he is transcendent as well as cosmic. The ultimate knowledge understands that. And the integral yoga is that which, having found the transcendent, can return upon the universe and possess it. So, when you possess something, you have power over it. I, I possess this book, I can do what I want with it. So, he is saying, get the transcendence. Get rid of your illusion that you are the body-mind life. Go up, purify yourself. But having gone to the transcendent, come back with that consciousness and Change the body mind life. That's the integral yoga. That's what he's saying. Not the other yogas. The mm. other yogas are rejecting. No, he says the integral yoga, yes. That's right. Okay? That's it. Uh, which, having formed the transcendent, can return upon the universe and possess it, retaining the power freely to descend as well as ascend the great stair of existence. So, which is the great stair of existence? In sequence, the inconscient the subconscious, matter, life, mind, higher mind, illumined mind, intuitive mind, over mind, super mind. This is the, the great stair of existence. So, you have to climb and once you have climbed there, come back and change this also. That is the integral yoga, not the other yogas. The other yogas are satisfied by rejecting all this and going up. So, says, I have no problem with that. If they want to do that, let them do. But integral yoga, I want to change even the lowest. Okay, so. <clears throat> For if the eternal wisdom exists at all, the eternal wisdom, the highest divine wisdom, 
at all the faculty of mind also must have some high use and destiny otherwise why did the divine create it that use must depend on its place in the ascent and in the return it must come back to where it started its journey from and that destiny must be a fulfillment and transfiguration not a rooting out or an annulling it should not reject body mind and life but it should fulfill and transfigure so what would be the transfiguration of the body it would not be subject to death it would not be subject to hunger and sleep it would be illness illness yes, yes no illness either nothing it would be master of itself what would be the transformation of the vital pure enjoyment pure enjoyment not pleasure but pure enjoyment what would be the transfiguration and fulfillment of mind a divine knowledge without error that's what sri ramana wants not a rooting out or an annulling not a rejection of body mind life but a transfiguration of body mind life now we come to the last para which we can read okay we perceive then these three steps of nature a bodily life which is the basis of our existence here in the material world a mental life into which we emerge and by which we raise the bodily to higher uses and enlarge it into the greater completeness and a divine existence which is at once the goal of the other two and returns upon them to liberate them into their highest possibilities regarding none of them as either beyond our reach or below our nature and the destruction of none of them as essential to the ultimate attainment we accept this liberation and fulfillment as part at least and a large and important part of the aim of yoga so we have to get to the divine consciousness come back here without rejecting it and transform it that is the integral yoga that's what he said so you have three levels you have a physical bodily life bodily life you have a mental life those who are philosophers thinkers researchers scientists they are living more in the mind than in the body and life then you have the divine life the three stages that's the next chapter the three fold life so the vital life is considered in the as the bodily life yes ordinary life bodily life with body more more concerned with body and vital because everybody is not he has told you earlier if you remember that mind is still not yet developed it is still in evolution <laughs> so that complete the next time we go to the three fold life the bodily life the mental life and the spiritual life man has a choice of any of these thank you ranga namaste all